Hello everyone. In this demo I'm going to attempt to show you how to create a believable eyeball. So I'm going to have to do some repair work. I'm going to have to mache some of the ugly mess on these eyes. I don't care if they're a little wobbly because this is supposed to look like a cartoon character. So as you can see the artist had some level of talent and very creative. I've never seen anyone make uh, Gary the snail mask until this student came along. But it, I feel like an artist is a combination of many things. You can have talent and you need uh, some degree of skill that you can build or be born with. You have to be thoughtful and I feel like poetic and many other things to be an artist. But another very important thing that we have to add to that list is you have to have a re very strong work ethic and a commitment uh, to craftsmanship. And as you can see, that's where this piece kind of breaks apart. This artist needed a, a lot uh, a lot better commitment to his craftsmanship and, and to his work ethic and to making this thing correct. So I'll do a demo where I create the eyes for this piece, but I'm going to have to do a lot of mache work first. All right now it's time to just let this thing dry. It's not perfect, uh, but I should be able to sand it because I put it on, I put the paper mache on very thick. And so that'll help me sand this out and get it the way I want it. I'm gonna leave it a little bumpy, uh, wobbly, and not bumpy, but wobbly, not looking like a perfect sphere, just because this is a cartoon character and I think that'll be okay and acceptable. So I'll try to sand this out as smooth as I can get it once it dries. 
it's a lot easier to make it right the first time than it is to try and fix all the mistakes the second time. Our mache is dry and we're ready to sand. I have two kinds of sandpaper here, one fine grit and one coarse grit. Let's speed this up a little. This right here is a Dremel tool. This is one of our classroom Dremel tools. We got a bunch of these, uh, different styles, different makes, but uh, they all work very similar. You got a lock here so you can open this chuck, change out different bits. So this is something you would have access to. So you, you have varying speeds. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on a low setting and I'm gonna speed this thing up. Okay, so that is sanded now. For the most part, I'm going to go back over it and hand sand it just a little, and then it'll be ready for paint. As always, safety first when you're using the power tools. Uh, we also have, if, if, you, if you're okay with the eye shielding, which is what I usually use, that's fine. But we also have the full-blown face shields for those of you who are worried about damaging your face. Uh, so we, we have a lot of safety equipment here in class. Um, but always use uh, eye protection at the very least whenever you're using power tools because uh, as you know everybody needs their eyes especially artists so now i'm going to go ahead and hand sand this just a little i would like to sand this a little more with the tool with the dremel tool the little rotary tool but i'm not going to be able to because some of the lumps and bumps are so bad in this piece remember i didn't make this mask i'm just trying to salvage it so some of it was so rough that if I went back and sanded it as good as I want to, it's just not gonna, it's gonna create too many holes and things like that and set us back too far for our demo. I think it might still come out pretty good like this though.
Okay, so it's still pretty lumpy and bumpy uh, as far as, I, I think, to an acceptable amount because, uh, like I said, it's going to be a cartoon. And we'll fill some of this in with paint. But for the most part, it's pretty smooth. It's just it has some wobbly effect to it. Like I said, I think we may be able to get away with that because this thing is a cartoon. It'd be a lot nicer just to start from scratch, but we don't have that kind of time. At least I don't. All right, nice and smooth. Now it's ready for application of paint. Okay, so we're going to put several thick layers of paint on this, try to cover up and fill up any of those little anomalies that are left from our poor mache job. And uh, we'll try to smooth that out, make it really nice, and then we'll put the uh, finishing touches on the paint job. So one thing you might notice, I haven't been careful with the old paint job. That's because I'm going to repaint it. I'll come in here later and edge underneath here with my my new actual shell color here i like the color of the shell but i think i'm gonna do something a little different with it so i'll just paint over it anyway already it's looking much better the paint has dried and now it's time for another layer There's already white paint in the brush, so I may as well paint another layer on this mask while I'm at it. I usually like to keep more than one work going at a time. While one piece of art is drying, I can switch to the other. Having multiple irons in the fire allows me to keep working and maximizes efficiency. 